So we have seen the main risk of nuclear installation. Uh, let's touch now on, on some uh, very important uh, principle of uh, safety analysis, which is the concept of, of safety function. So what should be prevented and mit mitigated? As we have seen uh, in the, the section on, on the main risk of accident, we should av avoid the failure to control the nuclear reaction, to avoid the kind of power ex ex excursion that occur at, at Chernobyl, and um, uh, failure to remove the heat, uh, and for instance a loss of uh, cooling of the reactor is something essential not only during the operation of uh, the reactor but also after shutdown because these two kind of uh, event could result in a core damage failure of the containment and potentially radioactive releases so the, the fundamental safety objective is to keep permanently three main safety functions First, the control of core reactivity. Second, core cooling and removal of uh, residual power. And the containment of uh, radioactive products. So the first uh, safety function is how to control reactivity. Uh, you see again here this uh, picture of uh, the vessel with the control rods that could insert in the reactor. So these control rods um, can fall by, by gravity and another way of controlling reactivity is to inject boron uh, in the water of the reactor because the boron is a nucleus that uh, capture neutron. Uh, but to control this reactivity, you need also nuclear instrumentation and nuclear detectors to know exactly what is the level of the flux and the sort of population of neutron in the, uh, in, in the core. Uh, you will see now a small video that uh, tell you more about uh, how to control reactivity. Control of the chain reaction requires careful control of the reactivity present in the reactor core. Using two complementary means of action, consisting of the control rod clusters and the boron concentration in the primary coolant. Before describing their roles, it is necessary to note that there are two categories of control rod clusters. The black ones that strongly absorb neutrons and the grey ones that contain a far less powerful absorbent, shown here in a thin outline, and that it is also possible to vary the boron concentration in the primary coolant as desired. These means of action are used to fulfill three main functions. The shutdown function by means of the black control rod clusters which are highly absorbent and must be entirely withdrawn from the core to obtain maximum effect when rapidly introduced to stop the chain reaction. The compensation function which consists in approaching criticality when K equals 1, mainly by adjusting the boron concentration, but also by control rod cluster movement. The adjustment or control function, corresponding to final adjustment of the multiplication factor with K nearly equal to 1, to change or stabilize the heat output of the reactor. This is done using the grey control rod clusters. Let's now see how the 53 control rod clusters of Electro-1 are used, which are not individually controlled, but move in banks of 4 or 8 clusters, positioned symmetrically. There are one group designated R, consisting of 8 adjustment control rod clusters, which are of the grey type. Two groups designated G1, consisting of 4 control rod clusters, and one group designated G2, consisting of eight grey control rod clusters. Two groups designated N1 and N2, of eight black control rod clusters each, and 17 shutdown or safety control rod clusters. In Electra 2, whose core is larger, there are 65 control rod clusters, 
i.e. 12 more. Specifically, 9 adjustment control rod clusters instead of 8, the same number of grey control rod clusters, the same number of black control rod clusters, and 28 shutdown control rod clusters. It is to be noted that the movements of the control rod clusters are made with special care being paid to the heat distribution in the core. Observation of the manner in which the heat due to fission varies vertically, for instance along the core axis, shows that far less heat is released near the top and the bottom as a result of leakage of neutrons, and the most is released at mid-height in the core. But this pattern can be disturbed by a number of effects. For instance, if the highly absorbent black control rod clusters are introduced, less heat is produced in the upper part and more in the lower part, with a substantial risk of local overheating at a constant overall heat output. If, on the other hand, the grey control rod clusters are introduced, the effect is far more diffuse and therefore acceptable. But the ideal approach is to vary the boron concentration in the water as neutron absorption is then uniform and there are no disturbances in the core. For this reason, when operating at full power, the boron concentration is adjusted so that all the controller clusters are in the up position except for a few grey controller clusters that are assigned to control and which are only inserted a small distance into the core. Furthermore, there is a device that constantly compares the amount of heat released in the upper half of the core to that released in the lower half, so as to be able to detect any major imbalance in the heat distribution. This is a safety concern. So the second uh, safety function is to ensure permanently uh, cooling of the system. So, again here have the air this sketch of the main uh, cooling system. This is uh, related to the uh, EPR, but uh, typical of most uh, PWR reactor. So in normal operation, again, you have here the main primary system, which cools the core, uh, goes to the steam generator and the pressurizer here, and the steam generator itself is uh, uh, cooled by the main feed water uh, that on for me heat, but uh, in case you lose this uh, secondary system, you have an emergency feed water system that could compensate especially uh, during shutdown of if this uh, system uh, becomes unavailable. You have here a system which is capable of controlling the concentration of boron inside the primary system, but also to uh, remove the purity through the filters. Uh, during uh, shutdown period of the reactor, uh, you got a um, uh, reactor heat removal system uh, who is uh, able at uh, low power uh, to remove the uh, heat of uh, uh, the, the residual power and uh, this reactor uh, uh, it removal system is itself cooled by a component cooling water and then an essential service water which is uh, water for the river. Uh, you have also here a system which is an emergency operating system if there is a problem of, of reactivity in, in the core we can ingest a large quantity very rapidly of boron to stop the reactor system. And then inside the containment you have here large quantity of water that is able to serve a safety injection system if there is a breach on the one of these loops uh, in order to compensate and to continue cooling uh, the, 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 the overall system. The next um, video show you a little bit more on this different uh, cooling system and cooling function. One of the three nuclear safety functions is cooling of the fuel. It is necessary to perfectly control the removal of the heat released in the reactor core, which requires excellent functioning of the reactor coolant system and its ancillary systems. 
Three basic conditions must be fulfilled in normal operation. The presence of coolant, i.e. the primary cooling water at the required pressure. Circulation of the coolant by the action of the main coolant pumps and removal of heat from the reactor coolant system as the primary loops operate in the closed circuit mode, it is necessary for all the heat produced in the reactor core to be removed by the steam generators. This cooling system must be highly effective. In the reactor vessel, the water rises up inside the fuel assemblies at high speed, passing from bottom to top in less than one second. It is necessary to extract around 20 megawatts from each fuel assembly when the reactor is operating at full power and around 100,000 watts from each fuel rod. Let's get an idea of the temperature in the rods. At full power, the water removing the heat that circulates in contact with the rods is at a temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius, whereas the cladding of the rods is at around 350 degrees but the temperature increases over a few millimetres to around a thousand degrees at the centre of the fuel pellets that constitute the heat source. All the parameters indicating proper cooling of the fuel must be carefully monitored to be able to act quickly and effectively at the slightest incident. If anything wrong is detected, the reactor is immediately scrammed. But this does not completely solve the problem as what is referred to as decay heat or residual heat remains due to the radioactivity of the fission products. When the chain reaction is stopped, the power level rapidly drops to 7% of the operating level, then drops more slowly. Thus, the power level is around 7% immediately after shutdown, 5% after one minute, 1.5% after one hour, 0.6% after one day and continues to drop increasingly slowly. It is to be noted that the level of 5% after one minute corresponds to around 140 megawatts in the case of Electra 1 and 200 megawatts in the case of Electra 2. And that after one hour it is still at 40 megawatts in the case of Electra 1 and 60 megawatts in the case of Electra 2. Removal of the decay heat must be continued well after normal shutdown of the reactor or after a scram caused by a fault. This is one of the crucial problems that must be solved to guarantee that the installation is safe. Okay, as <coughs> was already mentioned, it's uh, very important not only to cool the reactor during normal operation but also after shutdown and this uh, picture gives you an idea of uh, the, the power after shutdown that uh, needs to be extracted from, from the system in order to control the temperature so starting from 100% power at the uh, initial that's one uh, second uh, after the shutdown you still have 7% of uh, the, the thermal power and say after one hour you have 1.5% so this is uh, and, and one year after you have 0.6% uh, of the initial uh, power so this is uh, very important and, and usually the problem is not so much during to the, the cooling function is not so much during power operation but it's after shutdown to ensure that there is always capacity to extract this heat. You will see now uh, in the next uh, video a little bit more detail than that also. And so the last uh, safety function is the containment function because it's through that that we can avoid uh, the radioactive release even if there is an accident inside the, the reactor and then some contamination or even fission products is released in the containment. So the containment could be either a passive through uh, a, a big buildings uh, which is uh, leak tight and there are for instance two kind of uh, uh, passive containment 
one with only one building uh, which uh, uh, has a liner inside so it's it's very tight <coughs> and uh, the the pressure can can sustain this type of containment in the uh, in the order of uh, five bars and uh, uh, another way of ensuring the containment function is to have two diff two uh, uh, two buildings uh, with um, a space between both buildings uh, maintained under pressure through a, a ventilation and filtration system. So, in a leakage uh, occurring through the first uh, containment, is uh, taken with this ventilation system and filtered av uh, before before release. So these are the three main safety functions that should be ensured permanently control of the reactivity, control of the cooling and control of the containment. <coughs>